The fall season here in North Carolina is often a great time to go for a hike in search of snakes. With cool but sunny afternoons creating perfect basking conditions for many of my favorite species. While every hour spent outdoors during this beautiful time of year is time well spent, you also never know when you might stumble upon something truly incredible. Okay guys, I cannot believe this is happening right now. It's about 61 degrees, it's cloudy, and yet look at this stunning animal. Now this is the eastern hognose snake, a species which I have wanted to see for years now. Ever since I started herping, I've seen pictures of these guys. And I've won now he's pissy. Let me see. If I can just get him to hang out. Don't die yet. I just want to pick you up just a little. Please. Okay. Guys, check out that gorgeous little snake. This thing is ridiculous. He's like Halloween colored. He's a fully grown adult. I never in a thousand years would have guessed that this would be my life for an eastern hog. Oh, now he's dying. Don't die. No, no, don't die. It's okay. Okay, so what you're seeing now is their classic defensive posture. As you can see, he is now dead. Now, obviously, he's not actually dead. That happened really fast. I was hoping he would relax for just a little bit longer. This is their natural defensive posture when they feel like they're threatened by a predator. They spaz out, they flip over, they gape their mouth, and for all intents and purposes, he's dead. Now at this point, the predator's freaked out because they say, what the heck just happened to the snake? The snake hopefully doesn't attract any more attention from the predator. I mean, look at this thing. You see it on the ground and it just looks like it's a dead snake. Um, this is the only snake I know of in North Carolina that has this defensive behavior. Southern hognose snakes also do that, but those are a lot more rare than eastern hogs. So, I guess I'll give my spiel while he's dead and show you the b-roll. Basically, eastern hognose snakes are some of the craziest adapted snakes that we have in North Carolina. They're actually toad specialists, so you can see his head is a really weird shape. It's really thick in the back, and you have this kind of point on the nose. Now, his head has basically evolved to be a shovel. So what he does with that head, he burrows underground, he digs up toads, and that's like 95% of their diet is toads. They actually have specialized teeth, their rear fang, so in the back of their throat, they have teeth that are made for popping toads. Um, so you know when toads get defensive, they'll kind of inflate themselves and get really big. These have teeth that are made to deflate toads, which is ridiculous. Um, they've co-evolved with them, so the toxins don't bother these guys at all. The venom is very, very mild. It's a mild neurotoxin. It does not do anything to humans, um, but it does help kind of slow the toad down at least while they're being eaten. Now, body shape wise, these are pretty stocky. Um, you can see even while he's flipped over, he has a body shape that is not that dissimilar to a pit viper like a copperhead, but their pattern is completely distinctive. Um, Eastern hognose snakes don't really look like anything else except for maybe like a pygmy rattlesnake. Um, which is obviously really rare, but they have that kind of square blotching. The coloration varies widely. You have black ones, you have orange ones, you have all kinds of crazy different colors of hog noses. Um, this one is really, really vibrant compared to the rest. You can't see the vibrance right now because he hasn't woken back up yet, but <laughs> I have lots of people to show you. So ecologically, eastern hognose snakes might be the most uniquely adapted snake that we have. Um, very, very few other snakes are toad specialists. When you think about it, it's kind of weird energy source. I mean, you have things like racers and coach whips that go after lizards. You have eastern king snake going after other snakes. You have Nerodia going after aquatic stuff. And you have hog noses, which decided, eh, I'll eat toads. Um, so they are a really, really neat species. I still cannot believe we found this in these weather conditions. Okay, to be fair, Thomas said this was ideal, but I didn't, I was like, it's 60 degrees, we're not gonna see anything. So that is insane. I'm gonna let him wake back up and hopefully it can get some bureau shots of him going back into his little habitat, but that is ridiculously cool. Just look at him! Oh my gosh. What a convincing display. Well, after several minutes of waiting, and a few attempts at setting him right side up, we realized he would not be waking up for us anytime soon. So, to ensure the health of the snake, we gave up on filming the end of his act and decided to move him to a safer area where he could wake up in peace.
Okay, I still can't believe that this is just a living eastern prognose snake chilling right here in the wild. What we're gonna do is move him to a little more sheltered area so that he can play dead more effectively. <laughs> Look at that. You're so weird, man. It is ridiculous. <laughs> that defensive behavior, incredible. So we're gonna put him over here in this thicker underbrush where he can hopefully avoid predators. Dude, this is the weirdest thing. I can't describe to you guys how weird it is for me to hold a snake. He's still warm, but he's just he's so limp. What an actor. What an awesome animal. Unbelievable. All right, everyone. That's all for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed and learned something new about the Eastern Hognose Snake. If you did enjoy, please be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel for new, educational wildlife content, coming every Saturday morning as often as possible. Also, for more photos and video clips from my adventures, be sure to follow my Twitter and Instagram pages at The Wild Report. Thanks so much for watching, and keep adventuring everywhere. This has been Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.